Christian Music Spotlight, Joe Neal here with you with the stories and testimonies behind the songs of your favorite artists in Christian music. And occasionally we venture outside the realm of Christian music to uh, talk with the various personalities that are making a difference in today's world of Christian entertainment, such as books, actresses, and, in this case, one of the great movie and television actors. You may recall his work from the 1995 and uh, beyond television series Hercules and also Andromeda. He just got done with the hugely successful God's Not Dead movie, and will be starring in the upcoming movie, Let the Lion Roar. Please welcome Kevin Sorbo to the show. Kevin, how are you? Good to be here. They never get those dates right. Hercules was from 1993 to 2000. <laughs> Andromeda was 2000, 2005. I don't know why they don't give you the right dates. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. I lost two years somehow. <laughs> I'm shooting the show. Now, about your days on Hercules, what was probably the most fun aspect of that show being on there for so many years? Yeah, it was, that was just a blessing. I mean, it was supposed to be five two-hour movies. We started in 1993. The series itself started in 1994, the one-hour series. Um, you know, just seven wonderful years of my life. New Zealand's an amazing place. And the work with the crews that I worked with, uh, most of my crew went on to work on Lord of the Rings and half a minute winning Academy Awards. So I was very lucky to work with some uh, very talented and wonderful people. And it was just... You know, it was just a great chapter in my life. I had a great time. Now, you just got done with the hugely successful God's Not Dead. You were at Creation Northwest, where we were as well, uh, yeah. opening for uh, Newsboys, giving an opening message. How fun was that, being in that movie alongside Shane Harper and getting to be in it alongside Newsboys and playing uh, just a terrific character as you did? Yeah, you know, that was... Uh, that's. Now, Pure Flix is a company I've been working with for about five years now. I've shot five movies with them. i got a couple more coming down the road. Great, great movie with John Ratzenberger, Chrissy Swanson, and Debbie Ryan plays my daughter. A lot of kids know Debbie from the Disney show. And the relationship just went on from there. They approached me with God's Not Dead, and I, I loved it. I loved the, the script. I loved the whole... I, I tell people it's sort of like a, a faith-based crash movie, you know, the one that won the Academy Award 10 years ago for Best Movie, where it's got like five stories going on, and they all come together at the end. And uh, it was just a great experience, and, and it was it was people out there that made it a hit. I mean, it was only two million dollar budget. This thing is best it, dollar for dollar. It's the most successful movie in Hollywood this year. I think it's closing in on the eighty five or ninety million worldwide. It made over sixty five million in the states, and now it's on DVD and Netflix and Redbox and number two streaming right now on, on video on demand. So it's uh, thank you, thank you all for this. Has obviously hit a nerve and a chord with people. And just word of mouth has kept this thing rolling. You're starring in the movie Let the Lion Roar. It's coming out on DVD later this year. It'll be online, I believe, uh, on September Friday. 19th. Yeah. Um, our good friend Jen Gotson is in that movie alongside a lot of other great cast. What was the funnest part about being uh, in this this movie? Well, you know, like you said, there's a lot of number of people. I just went into Nashville. I just shot for a couple of days. I mean, we all we all did our little segments. You know, this covers centuries. It covers from the birth of Christ up to the present day, and it really is just. Uh, I played I played John Calvin, um, who was a disciple of Luther. I grew up in the Lutheran Church, and I the one thing I known about I knew both of those guys were did wonderful things for the church back in the you know in the, in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries in those eras and there. But one thing what they what they're trying to do with this movie is sort of correct where the Bible was changed during those years, where they really took Israel out of the picture and uh, it took it out as, as you know the chosen land of, of God. And um, it's really about trying to get the Bible back on the road that it was supposed to be on. And uh, they did a great job with this. They did a wonderful job. Vanessa Frank directed her. Her father wrote a book on it. And uh, this is really a, a project from the heart with these people. But like I said, I'm only in there a couple days. I never got to run in any other actors that were in this movie. So I just went and did my bit. Kevin Sorbo joining us here via Skype for this edition of Christian Music Spotlight. Glad to have him joining us. 
you also starred in a movie that um, was here on air this last week, Coffee Shop. You had a little bit of a role in that movie. How did you get involved with Coffee Shop there? I know Dave Johnson, director, really well. Dave and I, when I moved out here in the, in the late 80s from Minnesota to L.A., uh, we, he and I used to go up head-to-head for a lot of different jobs, commercials and TV shows and movies. And uh, Dave's a great screenwriter. This is his first time directing. He did a wonderful job with it. Uh, once again, it was just really a, a favor. He asked me to come in. I love the script. I just wish I would have had a bigger part. <laughs> so it's just one of those where I think I'm only in the movie like three minutes total, so don't blink. You might miss me. But it's a very heartwarming. It, it airs on Up, I think, this whole month, and uh, uh, UP Cable. Um, and they do a great job with their Barb Fisher's a friend. I've known Barb since my Hercules days, and she went to Hallmark, and now she's over at the UP station. But uh, for me, it was just a chance to jump in there, and I like to stay busy. I like to work. What can I say? You're involved in a lot of different things. Uh, we've seen you all over the place here recently. What's up next for you uh, down the turnpike for you? You know, I've got I've got a, uh, a movie uh, coming out on DVD through Pure Flix called Revelation Road. This is the third part. I was just in, in, in the third the third of the of the three DVDs. They've already released two. This one's called Revelation Road, um, The Dark Rider. I hope I got that right. And uh, then I've got a movie. It's a family comedy. Uh, hopefully be in theaters by December. I know they got screening in Nashville where we shot it. We shot for four weeks out in Nashville. And a uh, very wonderful family comedy. I hope you check it out. Howie Klausner wrote it. Howie is best known for his script, um, Space Cowboys, with Tommy Lee Jones and Clint Eastwood. A wonderful movie that he was up for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay in that. And um, I hope people you know, dive into that. I've got, I've got a Western I'm shooting later this year. I've got another faith-based project I'm shooting up, up, up in Michigan. And I've got a family... Uh, sort of a, a teen rodeo. Uh, I won't be playing a teen, of course, but uh, it's, it's, uh, we're shooting that one. That one's going to be shot in Michigan. So I, I got three projects I'm closing up the year with, and I started a new TV series for the Hallmark Channel in January called Can't Get Arrested, so I hope you check that one out. No kidding. New TV series as well, jumping back well, in the world. Of... picked up. We're shooting a two-hour pilot. The pilot will definitely air as a two-hour movie in Hallmark. So you Hallmark fans, please watch it. If it has high ratings, then we become a TV series. All right, we invite people to stay tuned for more details on that Hallmark Channel in July, kicking off a new year. We'll, we're excited for that. Kevin Serbo joining us via Skype for this edition of Christian Music Spotlight. Time for a little segment we like to call Fun Fast Facts, a chance we get to find out a little bit more about your favorite personalities in Christian entertainment. If we were to peer into your iPod or CD player, however you listen to music, what would we find you listening to at the moment? Oh my gosh, you'd get a mixture of stuff. I mean, my, my taste ranges from... From Mercy Me to Led Zeppelin, it really depends on my <laughs> frame of mind, you know. So I, I'm I'm all I'm all over the place. I think right now what I just listened to most recently, I went to a charity event raising money for the Wounded Warrior Project yesterday, and on the way home I was listening to the Eagles' Greatest Hits. So it really depends on what my mood is. Nice. I'm one of those kind of eclectic listeners too. Yeah. I can be listening to a variety of different things. Yeah. When you get a chance, when you're not filming television or movies, do you have a favorite TV show that you like to enjoy recently? Um, you know what I like to watch, and it's it's just it just cracks me up because Wayne Brady's a friend of mine. It's called Whose Line Is Is It Anyway? Oh yeah. Um, I used to do improv. It's been a long time, but it's such a great way to get your juices flowing as an actor. And uh, I was on Wayne's talk show a couple times through the years. And I met Wayne. We did an episode of um, uh, Celebrity Jeopardy, and. The- I raised money for our charities, and I met him backstage, and he was in a different group of people competing as well. And he ran up to me and told me how big a fan he was of my series Andromeda. Uh, he was a big sci-fi fan. So oh, no kidding. was a five-year series I shot after Hercules. Kevin Sorbo joining us here on Christian Music Spotlight. That was our fun fast facts. Even a chance we get to find out a little bit more about your favorite artists. Now, on that note, you do do some charity work on the side. Yeah. Uh, Wounded Warrior Project, you also do uh, fitness thing for kids tell us a little bit about the charity work you do on the side yeah i have a, the number one after school program in the state of california it's called the world fit for kids i've been the spokesperson and chair for 17 years now um la county california unfortunately for better or worse but let's it's obviously worse we're the worst public educated state in the country we passed mississippi a couple years ago we ranked 50th in public education yay uh, <laughs> and, uh, i work in the la unified which is a really bad school district in terms of graduation they have a 54 percent dropout rate starting as low as fifth grade 
Uh, the 12,000 kids we have in our program every year, we have a 98% graduation rate, and we have a 67% higher GPA. So whatever we're doing, we're doing something right. And it deals with physical fitness. It deals with studying. It deals with life. It deals with just about everything. It's a three-hour program every day after school. Kevin Sorbo joining us, doing some great work on and off camera. We're talking with him via Skype here on Christian Music Spotlight. What do you want people to get from this movie coming out uh, here this week, Let the Lion Roar? If you could describe the movie, kind of tell us a little bit about what it's about. You know, hopefully it does the same thing that God's Not Dead did. Hopefully it, it is, is a movie that will get people having conversations. It will create uh, some interesting topics for people to deal with. Um, you know, it's you're always going to get people that are going to agree. You're always going to get people who disagree. You're always going to get people that sort of, pen, you know, those those fence sitters that can't quite make up their mind. So I, I, you know, the reason I became an actor, I like the fact that you can make people have, you know, have some thought about it and have a conversation about it. And that's what we hope this does. It hopes we let people that, that, that have a faith in God, or even though they don't have a faith in God, look at it and go, wow, the Bible had some changes on it through the years, you know, and uh, it might be interesting to find out where and, and why and how, and maybe where the Bible was supposed to be leading everybody in the first place. Now, you mentioned at Creation Northwest in front of a live audience that there could possibly be a God's Not Dead sequel. Yes. Is there a truth to that, and when might there, we expect it? There's, is there... very, there's very big truth to that. There is. And uh, they're working on a script now. I, I don't know exactly uh, what they're going to do with it, but I, there's rumors that they want to hopefully be able to shoot half of it in Louisiana and the other half in Israel. And uh, wow. people just have to wait and see what happens. But, you know... It, if and when that happens, the shooting wouldn't start taking place until you know late next spring or next summer anyway, because they've got the script to write, and it takes a while to put all those things together. It's another year, year and a half down the road, and you said your character potentially will be coming back in some shape, well, form, or another. Summer, you know, you know, it's heaven is for real is not the only place where people have passed <laughs> on and come back to life afterwards. So why can't my character? There you go. Kevin Sorbo joining us here on Christian Music Spotlight. Um, what was your favorite part? How did you get involved with Andromeda, the Gene Roddenberry series, uh, science fiction? How did you get involved with that one? You know, I am a big fan of the original Star Trek series. and We're talking a big fan. I've probably seen every episode 50 times. So um, I was in contract negotiations with Universal to possibly do another three years on Hercules, do seasons 8, 9, and 10. And when I got a call from Major Roddenberry and... Uh, I certainly know who she is. I never got to meet Gene. He passed away in the early 90s, but I was uh, I, I was blown away. She was Nurse Chapel in the original series. She said, look, my husband wrote this show back in 1969 when Star Trek had been canceled after three years. And Captain Dylan Hunt, the captain I ended up playing, was the first captain he created after Captain Kirk. So um, I was like, you don't have to send me a script. I'm in. And, you know, we ended up having a great five-year run on it. It was the first number one show in first run syndication that did very very well and uh that's how it happened we shot that in vancouver british columbia so not too far from where you guys are and just had a had a wonderful time up there and had a great time on the series it was i was i was, I was honored to be part of that kevin sorbo joining us uh if you could uh for our viewers before we let you go uh if you could tell our viewers the same message you kind of gave at creation about supporting family-friendly faith-driven entertainment you said bottom line uh, if you want to see more of this stuff out there, you got to go out to the box office opening weekend, send a statement, support it. Um, let us know how viewers can support uh, this family-friendly entertainment across the globe that you guys are you making. Know, you just said it, and that's what it is. I mean, Hollywood, it's show business, right? So it doesn't matter what the content of the movie is. If any movie opens well, trust me, Hollywood will make more of those. So I get stopped every day for God's Not Dead, for What If, for any of these faith-based movies I've been doing um, uh, and, and it's oh, uh, I'm trying to think of, oh, Abel's Field please check out Abel's Field another very good movie I did sort of a Cain and Abel meets Friday Night Lights and all of these movies have done well because people supported them and if you want more movies made like this you've got to go out and make them you have to go out and make these movies it's as simple as that so, I mean you have to support them so that opening weekend is very very important and I understand I mean you, you get some movies that come out that just don't hit a chord with people and some movies hit hit, hit one this was this hit a nerve. Obviously, God's not dead because it started in 780 screens, finished number two behind. I think it was either Spider Man or X Men. The opening weekend for them, we were looking at 200 million dollar movie against a two million dollar movie, and we finished number two behind that. And they bumped it up to 1400 screens. Did it again the next second weekend. Bumped it to 2000 screens, and people kept this uh, movie in uh, in theaters for three and a half months. So 
please support the movies that come out that that have you know the values that you want your children to see, and we'll make more of them. Trust me. Good stuff from Kevin Sorbo. Tell us where we can connect with these many projects that we're keeping track of here. To be mentioning here, where's a good place online to keep uh, track of uh, you and projects you got coming up and what you got going on? You know, they can follow me on Facebook and please go to the Kevin Sorbo official Facebook page. There's about 20, 30 people pretending to be me. <laughs> so if you go to any of those, please don't. Go to Kevin Sorbo official Facebook page or then go to Twitter at K Sorbs, K S O R B S. Or they can uh, go to kevinsorbo.net. I love your uh, Twitter handle too. Did, did, did I actually like. You know, once again, I got people that stole Kevin Sorbo, K Sorbo. So Sorbs is my nickname from all my buddies back home in Minnesota. Um, and that's just stuck with me all my life. They still call me that. So I had to go to K Sorbs to find something that was mine. That probably makes it difficult for people to find me. So a lot of people are probably following me in Kevin Sorbo, K Sorbo, and it's not even me. <laughs> Kevin Sorbo joining us here at Christian Music Spotlight. Well, we look forward to everything you've got coming up. Looking forward to Thanks. see the movie Let the Lion Roar. And uh, job well done in the movie God's Not Dead. Some good stuff in that movie. And we're looking forward to, of course, seeing the Hallmark Channel movie coming out in January. I invite all of our viewers to check that out and go find out more about you. And thank you definitely for your work over the years, everything from Hercules on down to everything you're doing for family-friendly entertainment okay. today. And uh, much continued blessings and success to you both professionally and professionally as uh, you continue to uh, inspire and educate and innovate millions across not only this nation but this great globe who definitely needs that hope of uh, message of hope and encouragement so thank you for everything you're doing thank you appreciate it right now with us we have a washington native here with us she was here at creation 2013 last year when we were in Amglaw, and she's with us again via skype please welcome holly star holly how are you hey i'm doing good joe thanks for having me Thanks for joining us and taking a couple minutes out of your time. Uh, of course, uh, Washington native. What have you been up to since we talked to you last uh, over Creation 2013? What's new with Holly Star these days? Yeah, definitely. Well, this last year has been just a lot of um, traveling and doing shows across the country. Um, I just got back a little bit ago from a trip to Costa Rica, actually, which was really awesome, uh, with a group called Never the Same Missions. Um, and I'm also just busy writing songs, trying to get ready for another album. Um, that we don't, we're not sure when we'll release that next, but I'm working on getting those songs written. So uh, hopefully we'll have something new soon. What was your favorite experience touring Costa Rica? Have you ever been there before? Was it a brand new experience for you? Yeah, it was my first time going down there, um, and I was only there for about six days, but the time that I was there was really special. Um, I was partnering up with a, a ministry called Never the Same Missions. Um, Susie Schellenberger kind of heads that up. She was uh, the head of, like, Brio Magazine, kind of turned into Susie, and now it's called Sisterhood Magazine. Um, but anyway, I had a really good time with her and all the students that she brought um, down to Costa Rica, and they, they went out on the field and um, got to share the gospel with people um, during the daytime, and then they'd come back and we'd get to, to lead worship and do a concert for them at the night in the nighttime. Um, so we got to go out with them one day and go on a crocodile safari, which was kind of the, a day off for them, which was really fun. Wow. Um, and then the next day we got to go out and like do missions with them, and and so they would share the the gospel through a drama, and then we would be there to pray and talk with with the people after they were done, um, which was really really awesome. So the time down there was really special, something that I won't forget very easily. So. Holly Starr here with us on this new edition of Christian Music Spotlight. In this last year, how has your music evolved via songwriting, uh, just music playing? How has your your style and your your uh, how has the Lord evolved you professionally sure. over the year? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, my music is constantly changing. It seems like. Um, but the thing that stays the same is is the the mission and the goal that I have in in the music that I write. And so, no matter how the songs change, um, this this goal that I have to share with other people about our God and just say, let's talk about Jesus. You know, um, I just love getting people's minds centered on, in on who He is. And so, the last uh, albums that I have recorded have been like story songs, com kind of combined with worship music. Um, and so, there's there's this like pop element. And then there's this worship element kind of happening all at the same time. Um, but this next, this this last year, kind of God's been 
been shifting my heart a little bit more, even more so towards the worship side of things. Um, just got a chance to go see uh, Chris Tomlin and Carrie Job do their Burning Lights tour, which was just amazing. Um, and I was just, again, inspired and encouraged that my heart is still and my mission is still just to lead people to Jesus um, through my music. And I have a big heart for the church, so any any music that I can write to just remind people of the things they already know about him is kind of where I'm continuing to head. Um, but in kind of a, in my mind, it's a little different, but I think it'll probably come out pretty pretty similar to what I've been doing. So. Chris Tomlin is definitely a great one to be influenced by. I, I don't think I'll forget anytime soon his concert set last year, oh, Creation okay. in the in the Rain. It was quite the show last year it was quite amazing tours burning lights tour is fantastic as well amazing yeah holly star here with us uh we've heard a couple of your songs of course in the seattle market here where we are getting some airplay it's great to see that uh how have you been uh enjoying this recent success that you've been experiencing so far Oh, man, there is nothing like having a radio station in your home state play your music. <laughs> I mean, we just, I just got to play in Linwood not too long ago and a couple weekends ago, and they people were there, and they knew the songs, and they knew where I lived, and they knew, you know, it was just cool to, to have that connection. So that's been super fun. Um, but just the, the journey that God's had me on over the past several years of just bringing me out of this small town that I'm from called Quincy. It's just really small, about 5,000 people. And my dad's a farmer and all that. So it was like for me to even be in, in this industry doing what I'm doing and getting the chance to travel so far um, and get to talk to so many people has been just a testimony of God's grace and also um, his ability to do in our lives things that we never imagined possible. So it's it's been a great reminder to me of, of the God that I serve, just continuing to serve him and continuing to never think or feel like I'm stuck where I'm at. I love being over there in the Gorge area where your hometown is. And that I think even in Quincy, when I was younger in the early 90s, used to go to the resort over there. I don't know if it's still over there or not, but it's Crescent Bar, whatever. Yep. Still there. Still there, yeah. So we, yeah. So it's a great little area, a great little town over there. It's a <laughs> Holly Star with us here on Christian Music Spotlight, this brand new episode. For those who are, uh, of course, you're very honest with your songwriting. Uh, that's one of the great qualities about your music is it, it's honesty and it's purity, and we want to thank you for that. What type of advice would you have for songwriters who are looking to serve where they're at, maybe as a worship leader in their church, or looking to kind of expand their horizons in their music career? What sort of advice would you give that you might have learned along the way? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, the one thing that, that really has meant a lot to me, and somebody told me one time, was to really continue to invest in this, the place that you're in right now. Um, and don't get your eyes so distracted by trying to, like, do this and do that. And how do I stay on top of everything? And, you know, but really look at where you're at and who, who the people got us placed around you. Um, and really invest in that place and in those people. Um, and if God opens the doors um, for you to do more, he will He will do the opening of the doors. Like, for me in my life, um, being in Quincy, I just had no idea how I would even do what I'm doing now. And I, I never really dreamed that I could do it to this capacity. Um, I had dreams of playing at creation, you know, at the gorge and stuff, but I, I didn't know I could do it, like, full time. Um, and so one of the things that God has shown me is, you know, you, no matter where you're at, there is a, there is a mission and there is a, um, a love love that needs to be shared and you can do that and through your music and, and you're going to write songs and maybe a song that you write is for one person maybe a song that you write is for 10,000 people but if God wants 10,000 people to hear that song he will be the one to get you to he will be the one to put you before all those people um, so just to continue to be faithful in the small things and um, which are really the big things um, and just see what God does that's that's been my resting place that's for sure Amen to that. Good stuff from Holly Starr joining us via Skype on this brand new edition of Christian Music Spotlight, the stories and testimonies behind the songs. Time for a little fun segment we'd like to call Fun Fast Facts, a chance where we get a little bit more about your favorite artists, some rapid fire questions. Here we go. You are a Washington native. What might be one of your favorite Northwest Washington hangouts? Do you have a favorite spot? Favorite spot. Um, let's see here. Where do I like to go? I love, I mean, I love Wenatchee. That's not too far from Quincy. It's yeah. about half an hour away. I love in North area. I just love, I love to hike. So up in Leavenworth, I like to go up 
up there and just hike hike around some of those trails. Um, but I, I honestly am a homebody, so because I'm gone so much, I love to be home. So <laughs> that's probably my favorite <laughs> place to be. But I love this area. I do love going to Seattle. It's fun going shopping and stuff. So yeah. So you've been a little busier these days with the touring schedule and all that. Yeah, so you're not at home as much as you used to be anymore. No, uh uh-uh. Yeah. If we were to peer into your CD player or iPod or however you listen to music, what type of music might we find Holly Star listening to on there? Yeah, well, right now I've been finally getting a chance to soak up Phil Wickham's new album, uh, The Ascension, which I'm loving that. And then I also really am a big, huge fan of Sean McDonald's. Um, mm-hmm. And the Hillsong Young and Free album is really fun. I like that one. And then also the United album, uh, Zion, that one's super good. So those are the those are the, the the things that I'm listening to right now, which is really good. Thrilled that Hillsong United is actually going to be on the upcoming Winter Jam, which will be a part of a little bit later on this season. Also, oh. Sean McDonald was great in concert, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. He is he is, such a he is he is he is excellent. And I'm glad that Phil Wickham has finally. It seems like fully recovered from his little vocal injury that was kind of similar to Matthew West. I'm glad he was able to be healed from that, too. So that's good to hear as well on that front. Holly Starr here with us. Do you have a favorite person in the Bible? As a songwriter, we get a lot of different uh, people sometimes. It might be David. We've heard Paul a few times. Is there a favorite particular person in the Bible that uh, inspires you or that you most can closely relate to? Yeah. Well, I'm really, really inspired by Esther. Um, just her courage um, just has really meant a lot to me. I just, I, that story I can read it over and over and over again and still be challenged by it. Just her willingness to to go against all odds and even put her life on the line and to stand up for, for her people. And, and that that's just a beautiful story to me. So that one, um, and then also King David, obviously, because he's a songwriter. And just his honesty in his, um, in his songs and in his songs is just like, wow, I just strive to, to be that way in my own life. So. Final question on Fun Fast Facts. Favorite TV show or movie when you get to be at home or on the road, because you can nowadays, watch it on the go with Netflix and places like that. What might we find you watching these days? I love the movie. It came out recently called um, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so beautiful. When when all all the end shots are just like, wow. We we saw it in the theaters, and I was like, this is a really, really good movie. Like, pleasing to my eyes movie. I loved it. It's good. I just find it amazing all the different places he was able to travel to and just experience and the viewpoints. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been, like, super really... fun filming that movie. Yeah, I could watch that over and over again just to look at the land and stuff. I loved that. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's one of those ones that lends itself to a sequel based on how the story yeah, goes. Probably but, not. yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Holly Star, you're with us. That was our fun fast pack segment. Chance we get to find out a little bit more about your favorite artists here on Christian Music Spotlight. Beyond the music, what is the main message or some of the main messages you want your listener to leave as they're attending one of your shows? How do you want them impacted at the end of the day? Yeah, by the time somebody leaves my concert, my my goal or my worship service is to um, make sure that they have got their minds just focused back on who God is. Um, and that's just the simple, simple character traits of who he tells us he is. Like he is our provider. He is our comforter. He is our king. You know, he is, he is God. He is above all. Like just reminding people. And cause I think one of our biggest challenges is just setting our mind on him. And, you know, we're, we're told in Corinthians to like set our mind on the spirit, you know, not on, the, not on the flesh. Um, because in, on the spirit, there's life and on the flesh, there's death. And so I just, I love to just cultivate an environment where that's happening. Um, so that's just my goal is just to say, Hey, let's talk about God. Let's talk about Jesus. Um, and let's let it be an encouragement to our daily walk and what we do in the next hour, you know, after we go home. So. Well, thank you for your music and helping to cultivate those discussions among believers and even non-believers throughout this great region and throughout the country as you continue to grow and continue to share your music. For those who want to get in contact with you, find out where in the Northwest and beyond these days you might be playing, uh, where can we connect up with you online and social media and all that type of stuff? Well, daily I'm on Instagram, so that's my favorite, Uh, but I'm also on Twitter uh, my website is hollystarmusic.com, but you can't forget there's two R's in star, or you'll, well, it'll probably direct you there eventually, but, you know, hollystarmusic.com. Um, I'm on YouTube as well. I got some YouTube videos there. Um, 
post some little short video vlogs every once in a while, devotional vlogs, so yeah, pretty much everywhere. <laughs>